In a career that has spanned over 20 years, Brian Duffy has over 80 wins to his credit. While some were behind the wheel of a limited late model, Duffy is most recognized for his success in the street stock division. Brian Duffy is at his shop, working on the car he hopes propels him to another memorable racing season. Well, in 2010, which was last season, we actually had a pretty spectacular year. I mean, a couple downfalls, uh, lost a few we should have won and probably won a few we should have lost, you know. And, uh, five wins at Bedford, second in points, came right down to the end with me and Bill racing for the points. Uh, at the end of the year, we went to Hagerstown for small car nationals and there was uh, 46 or seven cars down there and we qualified fourth and won the race. And then uh, the Western Maryland Nationals at Cumberland we went to at the Allegheny County Speedway. Uh, there was 20 couple down there for it. It was 2,000 win and we won it. So we polished off the season last year on a high note. Already this season, Brian has two wins at Cumberland. And his three wins in 2011 at Bedford has tied him with Bob Jay for the most in track history. The street stocks have progressed quite a bit since he first started racing. Well, I'll tell you, whenever I started running street stocks, they were called slide stocks. And that was back in like 1989. We had street radials. We ran big Lagunas, Chevelles, big Monte Carlos. You know, they weighed anywhere from 3,500 to 4,500 pounds. And back in the day at Bedford, we didn't even have a weight limit. So, you know, then I was the first one around here to build the little Malibu. And uh, it worked pretty well. And then, of course, Guys like Miles Chamberlain, car builders and such, got into thinking, okay, it's lighter, it's faster. So Miles started getting into some of them, as did all the other car builders around. And uh, it's gotten into the Monte Carlos now. We've got about all those used up. And, uh, but it's definitely progressed. I mean, it used to be we had a $1,200 car for 300 to win. Now it's 25,000 for 250 or 300 to win. So the cost has gone way up in the Payout hasn't went up at all. Last season, the team ran two cars, the Camaro for Bedford and a Monte Carlo for other tracks. This year, they have scaled back in the name of convenience. Come the end of the year, you know, I, I had some interest in the car over at Heston, and I sp spoke it over with Valerie, my girlfriend. I said, you know, we really don't need, you know, forty or $50,000 worth of toys sitting around. I said, we're getting a little old to load and unload and load and unload all the time. I said, let's sell the one car buy an enclosed trailer, that way we can fit in with the big boys up at Clearfield because if you don't have an easy up tent and an enclosed trailer, you're just a peon. Brian is not a points racer. Despite his win total, he has garnered only one championship thus far. He prefers competing at special events. We like to travel, you know, we like, we like to go to the big shows, the extra pay shows. Uh, of course, that's always where your best competition is. You know, and I always bring up Lernerville and Clearfield, you know, it's just those guys that they're a notch ahead of everybody around our area as far as what they can do with their cars. And, you know, and I just feel that if you can take one of these cars that doesn't quite have what they have and be competitive with them, then I think you're in, 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 the, in the ballpark. Brian doesn't have to go far to find tough competitors like Bill Henney at tracks such as Bedford and Heston. You know, of course, Bill's a good competitor and always tough to race with. And, you know, there's a handful of guys anywhere you go. You know, I've, I've raced just about every track around here over the years. And I know these guys, you know, I'm good friends with Joe Kelly. Uh, Joe's the hot shot, Lernerville area. You know, he's a hot shot anywhere he goes. And we all kind of have a mutual respect for each other in the sport. And, uh, you know, there's sometimes there's no love lost between a couple guys. And sometimes afterwards you sit and have a beer and you laugh about getting into each other. To compete against the big dogs at big shows, it takes cubic dollars. Finances forced Brian to return to the street stocks after a stint in the limited late models. Now he has the backing to stay competitive. The sponsors are really important. Emmer's Poultry, uh, Hauser's Garage, uh, Flix Estate Service, Helsel's Auto Center, you know, are my biggest, biggest helpers along with Interchange Parts and Sacco Auto Wreckers. Uh, of course, Edge Racing Engines build my engines for me. Uh, we started off with him just a few years ago, and dollar for dollar, it's the best horsepower money can buy. Money and horsepower may be vital to winning, yet so is a dedicated crew. One member of Team 38 is Brian's girlfriend, Val, a former racer herself. Valerie and I knew of each other through the races. Uh, 
But the funny thing is, is how we got together was uh, just a few years ago, I was at the airport in Altoona. I was flying to go to Florida to Volusia. And actually, she was at the airport flying to go out to go to East Bay. And we were on the same flight to BWI, and uh, we got to talking, and uh, we hooked up to go to the races down there. I drove down to East Bay, and went to the races, and hung out with her down there, and uh, the rest is history. We've been together ever since. Val uses her racing background to help whenever she can. He, he has a lot more experience. He knows a lot more about setups, and I never ran street stock, so it's a little bit different animal, but I think sometimes I do, maybe with tire selection and, things, and gear selection, I think sometimes maybe I just offer another aspect, another way to look at things. She's a big asset to me and my team. Uh, without her, I couldn't do it. You know, not only is my girlfriend and crew member, but basically co-owner, you know, she helps pay the bills. And Although I don't know him well, Brian has always seemed jovial and laid back when I've spoken to him. I try to, I try to be as easygoing and happy as I can. Everybody's adrenaline reacts different ways. And, you know, mine, I'll sit in the lineup area and take a nap. You know, a lot of people were sitting in there just all jittery, ready to go. And uh, once I sit down in the car, my crew knows to uh, just, once I get the belts over my shoulders, just to walk away and leave me do my thing. And I was surprised to find out that Brian once worked for his racing idol. In 1999, went to work for the Richard Petty Driving Experience out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and was a mechanic and driving instructor, and got to drive on uh, a lot of the big tracks, Texas, Bristol, Charlotte, Indianapolis, uh, Nazareth, Milwaukee, Mal. Uh, I even instructed Tom Watson, the pro golfer at, at Indy. And uh, it, it, it was a fun experience, you know, it was, it was a neat deal, but uh, it was just nice to get back home, get back to racing my own stuff. And These days, Brian is happy being his own boss. I have a little body shop here at my house, uh, Brian Duffy Auto Body, uh, just kind of a one man band self-employed, get along with the boss well that way. Uh, it's tedious work. I mean, the stuff I do, I, I do kind of classic car restorations, do a lot of Corvettes. I have a private collector in New Florence that I do a lot of work for. Uh, you know, we get upwards of 400 hours into a paint job for one of these classic Corvettes. I mean, whenever they're done, they're, you know, Bloomington Gold ready you know i mean i had a couple cars that were ncrs top flight and uh, which that's a national corvette restorer society uh you know the highest honors you can get uh of course it's like i say it's a lot of work a lot of hours a lot of patience uh a lot of times if i get tired of working on it i'll just pull the door down grab the golf clubs and go to the course and go golfing or go fishing or just close one side up and come over here to the other side and work on the race car and uh you know one's work and one's relaxation and kind of whenever this in here gets to where it's not relaxing anymore then there'll be time to stop so but uh, we're still having fun with it brian and team 38 are off to a great start this season i'm sure they'll have continued success and maybe another championship is in the cards for brian coming up next on pit pass jed donahue speaks with a couple members of the pa posse donnie and Aaron Ott have teamed up with a legendary car owner to bring the famous red number 77 Sprinter back to Central PA Speedways. We'll be right back. Family fun starts at Jake's Carts. Choose a cart from their showroom or have one custom built to your specifications. Custom paint, lift kits, wheels, tires, and rear seats are just a few options. Go ahead, shake it up. Whether you are camping or trail riding on any terrain, Jake's Carts has the perfect cart your whole family will enjoy. Stop in today for a test drive. Financing available for qualified buyers. Jake's Carts, Route 522 McVeigh Town, online at jakescarts.com. 